I'm going to show you how I change the color of my props and backdrops in Photoshop using this photo here and turning it into this photo using all of the color adjustment tools in Photoshop. If you want to see the behind the scenes styling and shooting for this tutorial, I have linked that in the description below. All right, so as you can see, I've already gone in and cropped my image and then I did a couple exposure adjustments in Capture One. So I have gone ahead and started by separating all of the individual elements out on their own specific layer. And this is going to help so that I can manipulate each of them individually and have more control over the image. So we're gonna start out with the arch first and change the color of the arch and then we'll get to the backdrop. First things first, I am going to add a solid color layer over the top of my arch. And I am going to sample either the yellow or the orange. I'm thinking the yellow is going to look best and just kind of sample these colors to find which yellow I like. I'm thinking maybe a lighter yellow. And once I am happy with that color, I'll just click okay. And the next thing I need to do is just clip that color layer to the arch. And that is going to take shape of the arch but there's no highlights and shadows showing the inside of the arch. So what we have to do is change the blend mode. And we have all of these different options to choose from. And sometimes you just need to pick what's going to work best for your scene. Sometimes color will work, sometimes darken, you know, you just got to play around and choose what you like and what your preferences are. So the yellow on color looks really, really good, but I kind of want to choose darken because I like how there are some interesting colors being added to it. Like it's not just a solid color. Like with this, it's all monochromatic where if I choose darken, I'm getting a little bit of yellow from the highlight in here. I'm getting this darker orange color in the uh, arch. So I'm going to pick darken, but it's not the yellow color that I picked. So to adjust that, I can do a few things. First, I'm going to add a curves adjustment and clip that to my layer. And then I can adjust how bright I want the color to be. Now that's still not yellow. It's still kind of an orangey color, but I can come back into this color fill and add more saturation to it. So before it was lower saturation, I can just boost it up to that color that I want. So once I'm happy with that color, I can click OK and I can see that there are some different tonal ranges within the arch and I'm liking the way that that looks. However, the arch kind of disappears. So I want to separate that and I've already gone in and created a path here that I can select and create another layer on top of here, a curves layer that is just affecting this inner arch layer. And I'm going to also clip that to my arch. So I am going to drag that down. And as you can see, it's added more contrast to the inside of that arch. And there is more separation between everything. So I'm liking the look of that. And I think that is good. So I am going to move to the backdrop. And I want to create a different color gradient. I kind of want it to be more purple in this bottom corner and then maybe a light yellow and just kind of fade from yellow to pink to purple. So I'm going to create a layer on top of this and go to my gradient tool. I've already gone ahead and created my gradient, but you could pick through all of the ones that Adobe has as preset. If you want to adjust the color of the gradient, once you click and drag that gradient onto your scene, you can then go in and adjust your colors and it'll show up in your properties panel. If you don't have that properties panel, you can go to window and find the properties section. So if I wanted to change where my pink was located or maybe push the yellow out a little bit more, I can also use these to adjust where I want it. It's all up to how you want to style it. So I think I want a lot more pink, maybe less yellow. And once I'm feeling good with that gradient, um, I can start working on the product. Now, as you can see, when I created that gradient, 
I can still see the color that was originally on the background, which is more of this purpley color. And so I want these pinks to match. So I am going to add a hue and saturation adjustment just to my product. And I am also going to clip that. And I will change the hue and I'm going to zoom in so that we can't see anything else except for this clear section. So I'm going to change the hue until it is pretty close matching the gradient that I've just added. So that is looking pretty good, but if I zoom out, you can now see that it has changed the color of this product. So I'm going to fill this whole mask with black. I'm gonna to go to my paint bucket tool. I'm gonna to fill it with black so that I can't see any of the changes that I've made. And then I'm going to paint back with my white brush and just go in with the areas in my mask into the areas that need that adjustment. So I will make my brush smaller for this area down here, just painting along the edges. And that is looking better. So that, I'll turn that on and off so that you can see the difference. Now, one thing I also like to do, because it is perfectly smooth, I will rasterize this layer and I will add some noise. So I'll go filter, noise, add noise. And if I move this to the side and zoom in, you can see that it's going to just add a little bit more noise to the image to make it look like that backdrop is realistic. Now I'm going to bring it down to maybe 3% or even 2% and just kind of look at the difference between the pixels in my image versus the pixels in the backdrop. Now this is a very, very subtle difference but if someone were to zoom in, it's going to look a little bit more cohesive and not so perfect. So I'm just going to add 2%. I'm making sure that my noise is on monochromatic um, and then click OK. Another thing that I might want to do is add maybe a fake little lens flare to this just to add more interest to the image. So I've gone ahead and added a blank layer. And I have some brushes that I found online for free and I will try to find those and link those if I have them, but I love these. They're just, they add a little bit more interest to the image. So I'm going to use this one and I'm going to go into the brush settings and just change the direction of this brush and make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make it small and I'm going to add it to, there's this, light edge. So I'm going to add one to the corner there and maybe to the corner here. And actually I might transform this to be a little bit smaller. And I might even copy it and rotate it to make a little X and then merge those together. So let's merge these and make a cute little star. And that's looking cute. So I'm gonna lower the opacity just so that it's not so bright and move it to where I want. I'm liking where that is. So I'm going to copy it by clicking Command J and moving it to another location. So I could put it here, I could put it on top, I could put it on the opposite side. You kind of just want to keep it to where your highlights are, but I am liking how that's looking. I hope this video helped you and let me know if you have any questions. This video came from one of my subscribers who wanted to know how to change the color of backdrops, which is so great for me to be able to create a video on that. So if you have any questions, please throw those in the comments below. And as always, I would appreciate if you liked and subscribed and I will see you in the next one.